on the, on the back here where it says what makes a dish. That's what I'm going to be talking through first. And then when that is done, I'm going to show you guys some dishes that I hope you can take away. This class really, um, I don't want it to be about anything you guys will not be able to apply to your daily lives. I don't want it to be about making filet mignon or making something fancy that you guys would not be able to. I want you to have takeaways that you can apply to your lives if you're trying to live just a little bit healthier. You know that 80, 20% balance between puff puff and green smoothie. So yeah, that's where we're going to be today. Uh, does that sound good? Okay, so when it comes to what makes a dish tasty, one thing that we don't really use in savory dishes in Nigeria is sugar, but we use a lot of ingredients that ha already have sugar in them. Most people tell me, oh, I'm cutting out uh, sugar from my diet, but I'm going to replace it with uh, coconut sugar, or I'm going to replace it with date syrup because this uh, thing's a natural and uh, they must be better for me because I bought them from a health food store. When you look at sugar, sugar has two things in it. It has fructose and it has glucose. Sugar, simple table sugar, is about 50% fructose and 50% glucose. What you don't want in your diet is a lot of fructose. Fructose um, in the diet has been shown to lead to leptin resistance. Leptin is the, is the hormone in your body that tells you, I'm full, I'm hungry. It controls you pretty much. It's a simple hormone in your body that controls you. When you eat a lot of sugar, especially in, fr in form of fructose, it um, hinders your um, leptin receptors. So the more sugar you have in your diet in form of fructose, the harder it is for your body to tell your brain that you're full and for, for it to say, stop eating. So. Uh, knowing this, you cannot replace sugar with date syrup. It's just as unhealthy for you. You cannot say, I'm replacing sugar with this LT alternative, which is uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup has more fructose in it than some other things. You cannot say, oh, I'm going to use coconut sugar. Of course, coconut sugar, I would say it's, um, I don't know, about 90% sucrose. But sucrose in itself is about... 50-50, so it's about 50% uh, fructose. So when you go to a health food store and they're selling you all of these things, I want you to be able to ask questions. When they tell you, oh, here is something, and you taste it, and it's really sweet, and they tell you it's sugar-free, ask them, then what is in it? Is it date? Is it coconut sugar? Those things are just as The fact that they're natural, your body doesn't care whether or not it's natural. Your body just knows, I've gotten sugar, and I'm going to react to it the way my body is supposed to react to sugar. So think about those things and think about it also when you, when you make yourself a green smoothie or a smoothie in general. I was talking to my friend and she told me, oh, I've been trying to eat healthier. I just go to this place and I order smoothies and I put seven fruits in it. I'm like, why? Well, because it's good and now I'm eating healthier because I'm eating all of this fruit. I'm like, do you know that's a lot of sugar? Your body still processes it the same. When you eat fruit, I'm not saying don't eat fruit. When you eat fruit, you have a little bit of fiber in it. Uh, it's definitely better than, uh, than simple sugar in form of table sugar. But when you eat fruit, you also have to be conscious that fruit has sugar. So you should be looking at about three servings of fruit every day. So uh, between seven to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables, most people lean onto the fruit side and forget the vegetables but it should be heavy on vegetables and you know less on fruit so definitely eat your fruit be conscious when you're making yourself a smoothie that you're not just packing it with sugar something that will just spike your you know uh, blood sugar right after so when it comes to savoriness in a dish uh, the biggest thing is oil oil is what gives food this velvety taste when we taste it most people tell me I'm um, cutting out palm oil from my diet because it's unhealthy. Why are you cutting out palm oil? Why are you replacing palm oil with olive oil? Palm oil, coconut oil, olive oil, all have the same calorie quantity. A, cup, uh, a tablespoon of olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, all have 120 calories. So, and they all have different fat structures. They are all equally healthy. There's no reason why you have to go buy expensive olive oil when you have palm oil that you can use to cook and one misconception with palm oil is that palm oil has cholesterol 
when, when you, you see some packaging that say cholesterol free. Palm oil never had cholesterol to begin with. There is no cholesterol in palm oil. So you can eat your palm oil and if anybody tells you, just tell them to go away. I'm eating this palm oil and that's about it. So uh, having said that, I'm going to start my first uh, dish, which is, which is showing you guys how to make a healthy smoothie. Honestly, I think there's such a big gap. Like we think because we're drinking smoothie, we're putting all of this fruit in, we're really helping. We're not, we, you're not. You can have a 600 calorie smoothie. That's half of your daily caloric allowance if you're trying to lose weight. You can have a 700 calorie smoothie. By the time you put six different types of fruits in your smoothie, that's about seven, 600 calories, especially if the base for your smoothie is juice instead of water. I know, it doesn't sound as, as interesting. If you take a cup of smoothie and you drink it and you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, that's not a healthy smoothie, sorry. <laughs> you know. So, um, next, uh, I'm going to ask one more question. Who here drinks smoothies like as part of your healthy, healthy regimen? Who, we all do. We all do? We all do. So do you want to tell me what you put in your smoothie? I like watermelons. Okay. Oranges. Okay. Pineapples. Okay. Um, kiwi, if I have them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ca carrots as well. And carrots. So when you look at what you put in your smoothie, all of the fruits that you put in your smoothie, if you weren't putting all of those things in one smoothie, do you think you can finish all of them in one sitting? Like just eating, just sitting there eating all of those fruits? Probably not. Probably not. And that, that's what I want you guys to take away. If it's something that you cannot finish, if, if you were to eat it raw, there's no reason why you should be drinking it. it that, that means it's too much. It's too much for you. It's too much for your blood sugar. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a healthy smoothie that is not very interesting. But it's good for you. It will help you get that flat belly. So you want to know. Okay, so while she's preparing that, we can start taking questions from the audience. Okay. If you have any so, questions, you can just indicate by raising your hands. We have 30 minutes left, so make sure you ask those questions on time because time is running. Okay? Indicate if you have any questions. So, Runke, can you tell us the ingredients uh, of the smoothie you're, you're doing right now? Okay. So, uh, one thing that I find Nigerians like to put in their smoothies is spinach. Why? <laughs> what? Why? Because it's green. But there's so many other things that are green. Why spinach? Okay, so when, when, you, when you go shopping in Nigeria, you get something that looks like this. This is not spinach. This is not the Oyibo spinach you've seen in recipes online. This here is Amunu Chuchu. It's called Malaba spinach. It's actually agriculturally, it's not related to spinach in any way. This is slimy. It has no place in your smoothie. Like, I wouldn't drink it. So, you don't, need, you don't need, you know, spinach for your smoothie. This here is Moringa. I got it outside today. If you don't have anything else, if you don't put any other grain in your smoothie, this is enough. This is local, it's everywhere, and it's available year-round. What do you call it? It's Moringa. Moringa. Yes. Uh, you can find it anywhere. You can fi find it in the farmer's market. Yeah, you can find it outside. So this is one of the ingredients I'll be using today. I also have some water leaves. It's an option for you to put in your smoothie if you're trying to make a healthy smoothie. I have some mint as well. It helps with the flavor. If you don't like greens, you can put some... You have a question? Wait, wait, wait. I'll bring the mic to you. If the spinach is slimy, then the watermelon is also slimy. Oh. Sorry? The leaf is also slimy. A little bit. You can, you, can, you can use a little bit of it in your smoothie, right? But if you're going for anything, I'll say go with Moringa. That's easier. It's, it's not as strong. One other thing you can use is celery leaves, which you can buy when you buy celery. If you're not on uh, the highest level of fit farm, it's not something you want to start with. It's good for you, it's very healthy, but the taste is very, very strong. So 
uh, just it's an option as well. Also, when you buy beets, they're, they're usually there's beet greens, so the, the leaves that comes with it, you don't have to take it off and throw it away. You can also use that as an option in your smoothie. And if you're, if you're stuck with using something like ugu or uh, shoko or uh, tete, which is amaranth, go for the young leaves. And if you can, take off, take off some of like, the harder ones because that's what makes it, it makes it very, very hard for the blender to blend it, first of all. And then it's not very easy on the palate if you're just starting out eating healthy. So the ingredients I usually put in my smoothie, I start with water. I don't use juice. Uh, if I have nut milk, like uh, soy milk or something, I can use that, but I usually start with water. And then the greens. And one thing that really helps is bananas. I always use bananas in my smoothies, but I make sure it's frozen banana because it's, it makes it very, very creamy and it makes it a little bit tastier. One other thing that I use is yogurt. It's not flavored yogurt. It's not the type that you can take it, put a spoon in it, and no, it's not that type of yogurt because that is sugar, and you don't want that. So you're looking for plain, unflavored yogurt, and there are lots of local brands in Nigeria that actually have that. So it gives a creaminess, increases the protein content of your smoothie, and that really helps you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make a smoothie uh, and get some of you to try it. Sure. Do you want, do you want to take some questions? Sure. Okay, hold on. I have a lady up there. Hold on a second. Could you come Can forward, please? Can I start the smoothie? So what is your name? Good evening. My name is Chinyelu. My name is Chinyelu. Good evening. OK, I have a question on celery. Um, I learned to cook with celery and then put it in my smoothie. But I heard the leaves aren't good. So I just cut the stalk and put in the smoothie. Is it healthy to take the leaves instead of the stalk? Oh, they're, they're, they're both equally healthy. I, I eat both parts. I, I use the leaves for my smoothie, and then I chew uh, on the celery itself. Celery is actually calorie negative. So if you chew on celery, you, you burn more calories eating it than you actually have, that you actually have in your celery. So it, it's, it's very healthy. Both the leaves and the stalk is just as healthy. Okay, we have another question. Okay, go. Hi, Chef. My name is Julius. Yeah. I just want to take you a little yes. back. I, can you please throw more light on the palm oil, That's enough. whereby I don't like the reddish part of the palm oil and I burn into, uh, let's say, white or I mean, white color or granite color. Will it take away the calories or will it contain more calories on it? Sorry, I missed the question. That's um, I believe he was trying to get more that's clarification enough. on the calories that are contained in palm oil, right? Okay. Bleached palm oil. Yeah. Bleached okay, so, palm oil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't hear you. Okay, so so the so the palm oil, yeah, once it's bleached, like overheated and becomes white. Does it still contain the same amount of calories? Or? No, no, it doesn't. Oil, every type of oil has smoking point. When you're talking about something like ayamashi, for you to get really, really good ayamashi, you need to bleach the oil. And you need to make it really, really white. That is not good for you. Ayamashi is delicious. I'm not saying don't eat it, but just be sure that it's a treat, it's an occasional treat. When you take oil past its smoke point, you introduce free radicals into it, and that makes it very, very unhealthy. So every type of cooking oil has like a smoke point. When you're trying to do like a saute, or you're trying to use fresh oil in something, that's where you use uh, olive oil. When you cook with palm oil, it has a high smoke point, but you don't want to take it past that point where it's actually changing color, because you're introducing some things into it that you really don't want in your system. So it doesn't take the calorie away, for sure. It, it makes it worse, actually, yeah. Hello? So this will be the last question because we want her to make the, the, the middle dish, okay? Hi, Ronke. Um, I think the greatest challenge anybody would have losing weight in Nigeria is um, preparing your dishes ahead, you know, because we don't have all the time in the world. 
but the point is that you don't have electricity. I mean, I would really want to prepare the dishes maybe one week, you know, ahead. Because if I wake up in the morning, it becomes a strain, you know, to prepare this special dish all the time. Without electricity, how would somebody who wants to lose weight do it sustainably? Because that's, that's also a problem, to sustain that momentum. Wow. Uh, that, that's a very tough, tough question. For this naive Canadian who has power all the time, uh, well, I, I, I would say if you know, you know how often you get light or how often you get electricity, you can kind of plan for it that way. So if you're going to have a smoothie and you have power the night before, you can make it and put it in the freezer and just pick it up and drink it in the morning. Uh, you stay away from foods that typically get bad with intermittent, like something like fried rice you get bad easily without light. So maybe you don't want to prep that if you know you're not going to have light. You don't always know you're not going to have light, really. Uh, but unfortunately, that's, that's kind of all you have to work with. You know, you can cook for two days at a time or three days at a time uh, and just go with it. But yeah, I do understand that sometimes meal prepping is difficult if you don't have power. Hello, just in case you don't know, this question was asked by a I chef. I know. Okay, um, uh, and I, I want to acknowledge them real quick because I was at their session last year. Yeah. Afro Lems and One Cube Food Platter. Yes, it's, it's Afro Lems and One Cube By the way, it's mother and daughter, guys. both of them cooking against each other. It was amazing last year. I, I'm, I'm so happy okay. to see you guys again. Where's my <laughs> Where's the, I need the pepper sauce. Where's okay. the, where's the, we'll set pepper. So, um, any more questions? So listen, we're, we're gonna, we have to do something, right? You guys, I, I need your help. I need your help. Because we want to make sure that she finishes this dish before we leave. I'm sure you want to taste it, right? I want to taste it. But if she doesn't finish on time, then we might have to walk out of here without tasting it. So I'm not going to take too many questions. Um, what you should do is probably just write them down. And I can then ask those questions at her. That, that, that would shorten the time a bit. Okay? Write it down. Uh, but that said, um, could you just help me just put your password in here so we can stream that for you? Okay, okay. so I'm, I'm coming round. If there's more than one person in one row who's asking a question, then you guys should all write it down so I can just ask the question. That's you? You writing yours down? Perfect. You got yours written down? Okay. Okay. So uh, the next thing I'm going to be making is a fish sauce. So uh, at the back of your uh, pamphlet, you have a recipe for, it's, it's a multi-purpose sauce actually. You can use it to grate chicken, you can use it to grate fish, you can put it in uh, vegetables. I, I eat a lot of seafood just because it's easy and low calorie, especially when I'm trying to lose weight. So what we're doing here is we're just going to chop the vegetables. You have all of the ingredients listed here. So you have everything that we're using in the fish sauce. And then uh, we're going to process it in the food processor and mix it with a little bit of cooking oil. And that's what we're going to be using on the fish that I'm making right now. So do you want to go? Okay. I need somebody to blend it. Okay, so Ronke, are you, are you ready for a question? Yes, I am. Okay, so here's a question from a young lady. She, she's asking, how good preferably is honey? Replacing it with sugar in your drinks. What is the nutritional content and quantity to take? Okay, so honey Your body doesn't care if it's honey if it's coconut sugar if it's agave syrup if it's uh, Whatever it is If you're going to have it, I'm not saying cut it out, but understand that it's not a health well it's not a healthier alternative in that you can't replace it with sugar and have as much as you want of it. You can still have a little bit of honey, but it's, it's just the same as your sugar. What you're looking for is the fructose to glucose content, and if it's very high, if it has more than 50% fructose, then it's worse for you than simple table sugar. Okay, so um, I have a, a question from, from a lady, and she's asking, the, the smoothie that we just made, is it a breakfast smoothie, a post-workout smoothie, or pre-workout smoothie? Okay, I don't believe in post- or pre-workout foods. Personally, I don't. Uh, people who are 
bodybuilding might have different ideas. Your muscle, your, I, I don't know. I think if you're an athlete, maybe your, your, your needs are different. But a smoothie is a meal replacement in my world. If you're drinking a smoothie, you can have breakfast and then drink a smoothie before lunch and then have lunch. A smoothie is a meal replacement. So you can use a smoothie as breakfast with two boiled eggs and you're good to go. So definitely, it's not a snack. I don't believe in pre or post workout meals. So I always treat my smoothies as a meal. So what we've done so far is we've just made a broth of seafood and pepper soup spice with a little bit of tomatoes. So all I'm going to do is just go ahead and add in the egusi soup. So we're using just about a half cup of egusi soup. Egusi soup, like I said, is has a lot of oil, has a lot of calories, so you want to use it sparingly in your cooking. You don't want to uh, combine it with pounded yam, that, that's why you get knocked out. So you can use it to flavor a lot of things, a lot of dishes. You can put it in your vegetable base or you can put it in pepper soup. But if you're trying to lose weight, you really want to watch how much of it you consume just because it's very, very high in calories. So I have a question again. Um, someone was asking, which is better? Boiling, roasting, grilling, or frying? Sorry? Which is better? Boiling, roasting, grilling, or frying? She says, um, I prefer my yam roasted. Does it have better nutrition than the others? Well, if it's, uh, if it's boiled or, or fried. No, not really. You're not adding anything to it by roasting it, and you're not adding anything away uh, by boiling it or grilling it. Where you add something to it is when you go and fry it. You introduce the oil into the food, so you're increasing the calorie content of the food. Uh, it might be a little bit tastier for sure, but if you're trying to lose weight, then you probably want to go with the healthy alternative, which would be either boiling or grilling versus uh, deep frying the, the yam. Boiling? Okay, roasting is... Yes. Well, yeah. Roasting, well, roasting and grilling on the same, yeah. Okay. Um, so here's a question. Uh, the she, basil. Just like you gave me this. You gave me that? So, Ronka, the lady that is concerned about her husband, right? She says Nigerian factor. That what? Nigerian factor! Exclamation mark. I'm, I'm just elaborating. She says, I get home through a bad traffic. Hungry and sleepy. What can I just eat and jump to bed with? What can I eat and jump to bed? Yes, so like you don't have time to make supper? No, she's... Make a smoothie. Do you have time for a smoothie? You can make a smoothie if you have time for a smoothie. Oatmeal takes about two minutes to cook. So make oat, put some bananas in it, uh, and, you know, uh, jump to bed in it. Anything light, anything that would not weigh you down or be heavy, yeah, it's definitely an option for you. Oh, you're not, you, you don't, you just want to eat and go to bed. Yeah. If you, are you still hungry though? <laughs> she's hungry. So <laughs> she's, she's, she's tired from traffic. She's hungry. She just wants to eat and go to sleep. What can she eat? To A green smoothie is what I would recommend. A green smoothie? Yes. Madam, don't forget. I know why you want to rush to bed very quickly, because our guys are already in bed. <laughs> it's okay, it's very, it's very all right. Okay, um... So, okay. Okay, so... Here's a question from a young man. He says, what is your take on the following? Salt consumption. Sorry? What is your take on salt consumption and ginger? Is it okay to peel the ginger or just take it as it is? You can definitely peel the ginger, for sure. I think so too. Yeah, I, I use it. Salt uh, is something I personally struggle with, to be honest. I have a lot of salt in my diet and it's something I'm consciously trying to, to reduce. Too much salt is bad for you. I think we all know that. Right? So uh, the trick is to try to use other spices that will allow you to eat less salt. And if you, you finish cooking your food and you think it's not salty enough, you can put a little bit more. But I, I think the chef before me also mentioned it. 
salt your food after when you're eating it not why you're cooking it because sometimes you just continue to introduce salt and it becomes too much right so you talk you, you talked about belly fat right i talked about what you belly talked about fat. having having a flat tummy we all aspire to have that summer body the summer is Woo less than two months away who wants to have a summer body this summer i know i do we're working so hard but so how do we how do we get a flat tummy you i know you explained it earlier does ginger help one get a flat tummy right sorry Okay, so they heard that ginger helps you get a flat tummy. Is that true? You and know what would give you a flat tummy? Eating well and doing crunches <laughs> two times a day. There Girl, you is gotta no work magic. Hard. There is no magic to getting a flat tummy if you're not eating properly. Thank you. So you have to eat well, do some crunches, some detox water, you know, water with cucumber and lemon and ginger might help you with bloating. It reduces you know, if you have a lot of salt in your diet and you're trying to get some of the water that your body is holding on to out, drinking detox water will help you. But nothing, if you're not eating well, nothing is going to magically give you abs. You need to work for that. <laughs> so, ladies, no pain, no gain. Yes, that's right. So, uh, Ruka, can we can we have like a step-by-step -step, um, outline on the ingredients to all of this? Some of them want to take it home and do it and, and repeat the, the cooking. I got you. Okay, I'll put so, it on the blog. Right, right. I'll so, put so, it on nigerfoodie.com. You guys already have the step-by-step -step for the sauce. So, honestly, all we did, we seasoned the fish with some salt and pepper. We put some of the sauce in it, put it in the oven for 15 minutes, and that's that. It's done. Hopefully, I didn't throw it down. Uh, some of you are going to be lucky enough to taste it. This is from... This is from um, a lady over there. She says, what can you say to the type of cookware that we use? She says, I heard that some cookwares reduce the content of the food, um, especially the carcinogenic uh, cookwares. Which would you recommend? Uh, so uh, stainless steel is good. Anything with coating on the inside is what you want to avoid. So uh, if, if it's too complicated, go to the basis. Nigeria, the Shaki people are still producing cocoa rain. If you, if, you, if you can use that, you can use that in your kitchen to cook. But what you want to avoid is anything with coating in it that, you know, when you scratch, there's possibility for it to come up and go into your food. So anything with any type of artificial coating, and when you carry it, you know. When you carry a stainless steel pan, you can see that there, a stainless steel pan, you can see that there's nothing on it. So what you want to avoid is anything with coating that can potentially come uh, and go into your food. Yo, I had to taste this. Yeah? Lovely. Thank you, thank you very much. And can considering, what I want you guys to consider is everything that we made today took about 15 minutes, which is the fish, was, you know, the most time consuming thing. The wilted vegetable took only about two minutes. The smoothie took about two, three minutes. And uh, the agusti pepper soup took about 10 minutes. So no matter what time you have in your day, you can afford to spare 30 minutes to make yourself something good and delicious and you know what is inside it. Okay, please a round of applause to Ronke and Doho, please.